No. Hi everybody, welcome back. Video number two. I'm kind of on a roll today. It's either all or nothing with me, I find. So, um, answering more of your questions from the Accessible Yoga Conference, one question that came up that I have been meaning to make a video for for a while, sorry it's taken me so long, it's been kind of a busy couple of weeks, is how to do plow at the wall and how to do balance poses. So I'll start with plow at the wall, seeing as I'm already sitting down. I like props, if you haven't noticed. I'm a big fan of cork blocks, I have a lot of them. I also have the sponge blocks too, but I find that they're just too soft. I like cork blocks because they have texture and they stick to surfaces and they're dense so they can take weight. And seeing as I'm in a bigger body, I have to have things that are gonna support my weight. So I'm gonna show you my version of plow pose. It um, starts with a blanket, okay? So uh, I usually fold my blanket um, in half with the fringes together for this blanket. And then in half again, okay? And then in half again, so that it looks like a newspaper fold, I call it. I think it's called a Capallo fold or a Niango fold. I'm not really sure. I've had several teachers show it to me, so I can't tell you where I learned it exactly. But I do that for support. So sometimes I might have one blanket, sometimes I might have two blankets, sometimes I might have three blankets. It really depends on how I feel. And what I do is I place the blanket anywhere between half and a third of the way down the mat. And I'm gonna use um, my blanket, the smooth side toward my head. So the front side will be away from me. And I'm gonna line my shoulders up at the edge of the mat. And then it's, a, it's kind of a, a guessing game for me. Depends on how much yoga I've done already and how flexible my low back or my mid back is as to whether I'll be able to easily get my toes to the wall. So I might adjust a couple times in this video. So what I do here is I use the blocks to support my hips and the toes are gonna to come to the wall. So as we do on plow pose, the hips come up over the shoulders and the toes come to the uh, floor behind us. My chest, my belly, uh, get in the way and I often feel claustrophobic and suffocated in this pose so I tend not to practice it and I know there's a theory that the things that you're avoiding the most are the things that you need to do more of uh, when it comes to plow pose I don't necessarily buy into that philosophy I just don't like it and I think there are other inversions I can do that can give me similar benefit without causing me anxiety in my yoga class or practice so I'm very big about not pushing my students to do things that they aren't ready for. I'm all about living outside your comfort zone, but I'm also about uh, everybody having a good experience in their yoga class. I think life is stressful enough that I don't need to be stressed out at yoga. So, here we go. I'm gonna come onto my back, and I'm gonna line my shoulders up with the edge of the, of the blanket. So it might be maybe a millimeter or two away from the edge of the blanket. And then I'm gonna use my blocks to support my hip. So what I do is I walk my feet in as close as I can, I lift my hips up, and then I slide the block underneath my hips. And some days I can be on the highest edge of the block, and other days I have to be on the lowest edge. So it really depends on where I am on any given day. Then I make sure to push energy down into the roof of my mouth so that my head is stabilized on the mat. And when I do that, I feel the muscles of my neck engage. So I'm strengthening my neck muscles. Then I bring my elbows alongside my rib cage and I squeeze my shoulder blades together. Pushing down into the mat, squeezing my shoulder blades together, I push into my elbows and bring my knees up. So then my weight shifts a little bit and I reassess where I am. Now some of you who are comfortable doing your shoulder stand can push down into your hands and lift your hips up. Here's is where I feel comfortable. And I encourage your students to find where their comfort or where their edge is. Then I inhale the toes up and I bring the toes back to the wall. So sometimes the block shifts for me and I just adjust it so it, uh, it's comfortable. And for me, this is my plow pose. So my chest isn't lifting up too high or closing off my throat. If it is, then I'll strap it down with the strap. And as my back begins to open, you can notice I get a little more leverage on the wall. Okay, you can stay here for as long as possible. And then you can use this as a strategy for when you get um, stronger 
to push up into your hips. You'll notice I turn my head to look at you because I don't really have any weight on my head. The majority of my weight is uh, um, stabilized and supported by the block. So I can even lift my shoulders, I can even lift my head up. So there's no fear in damaging the vertebra. If you are doing full shoulder stand, unsupported by the block, you don't move your head. It's not wise. Then to come out of this pose, of course you've noticed I put my feet on the floor, I tuck my shoulder blades underneath me, I push into my head, and I release the block. I don't move my head when it is weighted. Let me say it again. I don't move my head when it is weighted. The weight of my body is on the block, which is why I love the cork blocks. So that's the way you can get into plow at the wall, using uh, the wall for plow. So I will see you in my next video where I'll talk about how we can create um, safe ways for balance for students who have challenges with their balance. Okay, thanks for being here. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, share, comment down below. If there are any other videos you'd like to see me put together, I'm happy to do so. If you want more on how to do yoga in bigger bodies, you can um, join my website, yogastaya.com. I'll put the link in the description box below. And that's a, an online studio for different, abled and different sized bodies. So there's lots of teachers that look like me at there and there's lots of students that look like you on there. So it's really about inclusivity. And if you want to train on how to do some uh, or how to teach yoga for people in differently able bodies, check me out on yogaforalltraining.com. Okay, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Namaste.